Uh, well, you mentioned the awesome tables there, so um, that that's probably a, a, a good segue as I'm ever going to get today to uh, introduce uh, Romain. Um, uh, offer of awesome tables, uh, uh, yeah, another mail merge, and uh, a whole host of other um, script projects. Hi, Romain. So uh, you're going to uh, reveal some of your secrets in terms of how you're using analytics in some of your add-ons um, to, to gain some insight. Yes, exactly. Uh, so uh, contrary to James, uh, this uh, uh, won't actually be a, a demo of a product, uh, but uh, mostly a presentation of uh, uh, what I'm doing with, uh, with analytics. Uh, the thing is, so this is uh, mostly for uh, add-ons developers and uh, also people who are creating uh, internal uh, web apps for their companies uh, and so on. Uh, the the thing is, uh, once you uh, start to uh, spend a lot of uh, time on the app script project or web app project, uh, you well at some point you. Uh, you are interested in uh, getting some uh, statistics uh, about usage of uh, of your app, and uh, when it comes to uh, app script, there are uh, some uh, specificities and uh, uh, really uh, uh, interesting way to to use analytics. So that's uh, what I will uh, demo uh, just uh, just now. Uh, okay. So, uh, can you see my screen? Yep. The presentation, the perfect. Uh, so, I will use uh, yet another mail merge as an example uh, in this uh, in this presentation uh, because a yet another mail merge is a successful add-on uh, in terms of uh, uh, usage. Uh, we have uh, more than uh, six hundred thousand installations. Uh, but uh, that doesn't end up uh, with a user trying it once and then uh, completely uh, stopping using it. Uh, we have uh, more than uh, 80,000 uh, monthly active users, so uh, 80,000 uh, people uh, who are sending uh, emails uh, every month, uh, at, least, at least once a month, but we have users also sending emails every day with the tool. Uh, and uh, we are uh, uh, sending uh, roughly uh, 40 million emails uh, per month. Uh, so uh, those are uh, nice numbers, and uh, I know them uh, thanks to analytics. Uh, so just to give you an overview and maybe a background about analytics, uh, analytics was, uh, well, first created to uh, measure uh, uh, websites metrics, uh, the success of your website. So uh, it was uh, at first uh, simply a, a JavaScript tracker uh, that you could embed in your site. And as uh, the web has evolved a lot and uh, needs have evolved a lot, uh, analytics is now compatible with uh, mobile apps, uh, and also with an uh, internet-connected device. Uh, and uh, that means that, uh, while well, uh, analytics simply offer a uh, RESTful uh, API, uh, so people can uh, simply make HTTPS uh, requests uh, to send data to, to analytics. And this means that, uh, yes, we can uh, use it uh, in any platform, including uh, app scripts. And uh, I will uh, show that I'm actually uh, using it uh, uh, on the uh, server and client side uh, in my add-on. Uh, but first, so uh, what should we track uh, when we uh, want to uh, begin the implementation of uh, uh, analytics uh, in an add-on, for example? Uh, so. Uh, as I said, analytics was uh, created first for uh, websites. So uh, the uh, basic usual thing you track in Google Analytics are page views uh, with the 
uh, URL or path of uh, the uh, page uh, user is uh, uh, as uh, as viewed uh, as opens. Uh, and in web apps, uh, you will track events. Uh, so there's another part of analytics reports uh, focusing on events. And uh, with events, you can send all kind of events. Uh, and uh, in my case, for example, I will be mainly focused on uh, well sending information about uh, emails sent as it's the uh, primary uh, goal of uh, yet another mail merge. Uh, but I will also be interested in uh, tracking other metrics like the number of uh, installations. Uh, so I can see the number of installation per week, per month, and compare uh, between two months if I have uh, more or less installation. Uh, I can uh, also uh, track a lot of different actions uh, made by users on the app. And usually, uh, each time I'm asking a new question to myself, uh, while I end up uh, adding a new uh, tracking on analytics to uh, investigate on this question. Uh, so if we focus, for example, uh, on uh, analyzing uh, uh, the basic usage of uh, yet another mail merge. We uh, could compare, for example, uh, the number of campaigns. So uh, that's actually useful. In uh, analytics, you can uh, send uh, one uh, event uh, which will have a specific uh, value. And for example, here, I've decided to uh, send uh, one event uh, per campaign, per email campaign, uh, with the uh, number of emails sent uh, in that campaign. And this means that uh, I have a nice uh, dashboard automatically created uh, by analytics where I can see uh, the number of campaigns uh, on a specific period of time, uh, the no total number of emails sent uh, within those campaigns, and the average number of emails sent per campaign. Uh, and I can uh, compare the difference between uh, a month, one month or another uh, to see if uh, usage is uh, growing or not. Uh, here uh, you can see, for example, that uh, the number of emails sent per campaign uh, is uh, slightly above uh, 50 emails, uh, which is uh, which makes sense as the uh, freemium plan uh, in yet other mail merge. Uh, let you send uh, only uh, 50 emails per day. Uh, you have many, many uh, pre-built uh, uh, reports in, uh, in analytics, and I think that's uh, one of the uh, nice things of the tool. Uh, you could use a lot of other uh, external databases to record all events happening in your app, uh, but if you want, if you decide to use analytics, uh, you will have all the uh, uh, all the reports already created, uh, which is really nice to uh, avoid uh, putting too much uh, effort in uh, uh, building those uh, uh, those reports. So, for example, here I can see the uh, number of emails sent uh, per country uh, and also the number of users per country. Uh, Sending events to Google Analytics is uh, uh, quite simple. Uh, on the client side, uh, as uh, we are uh, serving uh, or uh, web parts, web pages uh, in add-ons uh, using the HTML service, uh, we can include uh, the uh, JavaScript uh, li library that uh, uh, Google Analytics provide. Uh, and then uh, simply uh, send events uh, using the uh, GA uh, method to uh, to send all the information. Uh, and this uh, tool provided by analytics uh, lets you send quite a lot of uh, information, in fact, uh, when sending a single event to, uh, to analytics. So uh, you can send uh, basic information uh, like an event and uh, information about that event. But you can also add a lot of uh, information related to uh, your 
specific applications, so specific dimension uh, that will uh, let you uh, filter and aggregate data in different way, ways later on. Uh, I will uh, come back to that uh, in a, a few slides. Uh, and of course, uh, you can also uh, send data to analytics uh, from server side using your fetch uh, to yes uh, call the uh, endpoint uh, ssl.googleanalytics.com slash collect uh, to send data to analytics. Uh, which means that uh, if your app uh, is uh, running with the with a UI opened and the a user is uh, interacting uh, with your with your app uh, from a UI, I would advise to uh, use the uh, uh, tracking on client side. Uh, and if your app uh, your add-on is uh, running uh, via a trigger. Uh, either time-driven trigger or on some permit trigger and so on. Uh, well, you won't have a UI, you won't have a, an HTML page, so you won't be able to uh, make use of the uh, client-side uh, uh, calls to analytics. Uh, so in that case, it makes sense to use URL fetch. But uh, as there are uh, quote, specific quota on URL fetch and so on, uh, when possible, I think it's best to uh, switch to uh, client side calls. Uh, so one important, uh, one of the many main things that you you want to track uh, is your user growth uh, to see if you uh, get uh, more or less users. Uh, and uh, in analytics, uh, well, by default, uh, on uh, public sites, uh, you have the ability uh, to. Uh, well, analytics makes use of a cookie in the web browser. Uh, so this means that uh, if the user, uh, uh, if the same user uh, browse your site from uh, two different computers, uh, two different web browsers, or two different devices, uh, a phone and a computer, uh, it will be recorded at, as two completely different users. And this means that your number of users won't be 100% accurate. But uh, in fact, this is something that uh, can be uh, improved. Uh, and uh, we will see that uh, uh, we can uh, pass a specific parameter uh, to Google Analytics, uh, a specific uh, user ID, uh, in addition to any cookie that will be passed to, uh, to Analytics, and that will uh, let you accurately track uh, the exact number of uh, users of your app. This is uh, possible uh, simply by because uh, your users are actually authenticated within your app. Uh, they are using their uh, Google account uh, to open your app and so on, or your, or your add-on. Uh, so you can uh, accurately uh, track them, uh, even if you can't uh, collect their email address or things like that in in analytics. <coughs> there are, uh, as I said, one of the nice things about analytics is that uh, you don't have to uh, recreate uh, many things. Many reports are uh, already uh, available by default. Uh, so for example, there's a report where you can see uh, actions uh, of a specific user, uh, things, for example, that here, uh, he has uh, installed the add-on at uh, 9 a.m., uh, then uh, used uh, one of the uh, features of the app of the add-on uh, to uh, retrieve uh, contacts uh, from Google Contacts. Uh, then he sent a test email. Uh, then he sent his first campaign uh, and uh, reached uh, the quota, the free quota of uh, 50 emails per day. Uh, so I have here uh, the uh, life of the user, and uh, <coughs> I will be able to see if uh, he ends up uh, uh, purchasing a license uh, to send more emails or not. And uh, if it does not, does not, uh, I will try to uh, improve uh, my uh, uh, my flow, presenting my uh, uh, paying plan, and so on to uh, better. Uh, encourage the user 
to uh, to purchase and upgrade uh, upgrade these accounts. <coughs> this is to uh, this was to check uh, uh, action of a specific user, uh, but you can also monitor uh, common behavior uh, and see, for example. Uh, uh what people are doing right after they have uh, installed uh, your add-on for example uh, and uh, you can see uh here for example we can see that a lot of people <coughs> sorry <coughs> a lot of people are actually mm, installing uh and don't do anything uh, right after and so if we see those kind of uh, information in analytics it's useful to uh, investigate and try to uh, learn uh, why uh, they are uh, they are stopping uh, uh, right after the installation uh, what we can improve to uh, decrease the number of people uh, who uh, install but don't do anything after that uh, knowing that for every add-on or web app you will always have a, a part of the users who you don't know why, but they uh, simply install and never actually end up using it. <coughs> uh, so as I was uh, saying, uh, there are uh, two different uh, IDs in analytics. Uh, the client ID, which is uh, basically the uh, session cookie uh, that is added automatically by analytics uh, in the web browser uh, to track uh, if the same user uh, is visiting uh, your website uh, more than once, <coughs> uh, letting you uh, uh, split users between um, uh, new users and uh, users who has already uh, uh, come to the site before. Uh, and a user ID. User ID is um, not an option activated by default uh, in Google Analytics uh, because you need to provide yourself a specific ID uh, for each user uh, when you make uh, each call to Analytics. And uh, using the user ID is uh, really useful uh, if you want to uh, exactly count the uh, the exact number of uh, users of your app and not uh, the number of, uh, for example, uh, uh, number of uh, uh, devices uh, or browsers as uh, new cookies created uh, on each web browser, each device, and so on. Mm. So yeah, if you, uh, I don't think it's especially uh, necessary to uh, start with a, with a user ID uh, when you start using analytics, uh, but that's definitely an improvement you can add uh, once you have uh, started to use analytics and uh, once you want to start uh, to get more accurate statistics. Uh, also, not that there's a specific uh, issue with app scripts. Uh, if you are using uh, Google Analytics on the client side, uh, not that uh, cookies are not persistent, uh, meaning that uh, if the same user uh, load uh, your add-on in a dialog or a sidebar uh, multiple times, each time a new, uh, uh, a new web page uh, uh, served by the HTML service uh, will be displayed a new cookie will be uh, created. Uh, so this means that your number of uh, session uh, will uh, be very similar to the number of users, as if every action, every time uh, the uh, your add-on was used, it was used by a new user and not by uh, the same user who uh, used it before. Uh, if you want to know more about that, I uh, published a year ago uh, a blog post on the uh, Google uh, developer blog uh, about uh, uh, those kind of uh, issue with app scripts. Uh, so you can uh, see how to uh, better track uh, add-on usage. Uh, and uh, uh, for example, here, uh, instead of uh, cookies, uh, we can use uh, the uh, local storage uh, in the web browser uh, to 
save the uh, client ID uh, and also pass as a parameter the user ID. And if you do all that, uh, it will let you uh, make a better use uh, of uh, analytics uh, from client side uh, in, in add-ons. Uh, so, yeah, as I was saying before, uh, you can add your own uh, information to analytics, meaning that uh, by default, analytics will uh, grab some information uh, from the connected user, uh, like uh, the country, uh, and that's how we, uh, we were able to see uh, our uh, geographic reports, uh, letting us uh, see how many users uh, we had in a specific country. Uh, but you can also include your own dimension. And for example, this is pretty useful uh, if I want to uh, uh, track uh, all uh, the options uh, when uh, users are sending uh, a new campaign with, uh, uh, with yet another mail merge. And so, for example, <clears throat> I can see uh, the number of users uh, who are uh, uh, tr uh, checking the box to uh, uh, track the emails sent with uh, yet another mail merge. Uh, I can see if uh, they are uh, using uh, markers, placeholder uh, in their uh, email templates, uh, or if they are sending the same email to uh, every of the recipients, and so on and so on. And all those options uh, can be uh, created as a new dimension uh, in Google Analytics. Uh, to be able to create uh, nice uh, dashboards and new reports uh, for you to uh, investigate uh, on the usage of uh, a specific feature of your add-on. Uh, and you can also uh, compare usage over time uh, to see, for example, uh, here uh, the uh, email tracking feature is used uh, more and more by, uh, by our users, uh, mainly because we've made a lot of improvements uh, on this feature, uh, we also uh, better advise, uh, advertise it uh, in the add-on, and so on and so on. So uh, more and more people are uh, activating uh, or letting it uh, activated by default. Uh, and it's nice uh, when you see that uh, a feature you have uh, added is uh, more and more used, and uh, it motivates you to uh, invest even more in uh, in it. Uh, I can also see, for example, if uh, the number of uh, paying users uh, is uh, uh, increasing uh, or not uh, on a specific uh, period of time. So for example, here I can see that uh, during the same period of time, uh, my number of my total number of users has increased, but the total number of paying users, active paying users, have increased more. Uh, than the number of uh, uh, active view of uh, new active users. So uh, this means that uh, 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 among my active users, I have more and more paying users, uh, which is always uh, good to know. Uh, and you can, of course, uh, yes, uh, build uh, custom reports to display the data in any way you want. Uh, here I'm uh, uh, comparing a bit uh, usage uh, depending on the uh, uh, domain name and so on. Uh, not that uh, in Google Analytics you are not allowed to track uh, personal uh, uh, some information like uh, email addresses, billing information, and so on. I think uh, domain names are uh, okay to collect. Uh, I hope uh, I'm doing it, uh, but uh, I'm not uh, going uh, above that. Uh, so uh, that's all. R really, uh, the nice thing about analytics, it's very easy to uh, get started with it. Uh, as I've seen, uh, as I've shown, uh, there are some uh, tricks uh, linked to uh, App Script. You need to decide if you want to use it on client side, on server side, or both. Uh, if you use it on client side, uh, you need to be aware of uh, uh, some limitation linked to cookies that are not persistent. Uh, but it's easy to get started with it uh, without uh, asking you all those questions and improve your tracking over time. Uh, but uh, start simple. Uh, 
it's highly customizable. Uh, so if you want to create new data, new, re uh, new reports, it's uh, very easy. If you want to uh, send new data to analytics, it's quite easy to do. Uh, there's a big community uh, uh, to, to help you uh, find uh, examples and so on uh, on the web to, uh, to get started. Uh, it has APIs, exports. There's actually a Google Analytics add-on uh, for a Google Spreadsheet. Uh, so you can also uh, retrieve back uh, your data uh, in a spreadsheet if you want to uh, analyze, analyze it uh, in a spreadsheet rather than creating a custom report in analytics and so on. And I wanted to finish uh, on the uh, Firebase analytics simply because uh, uh, I'm uh, using more and more uh, Firebase uh, in my add-ons. And so, uh, well, I would be very interested to uh, test also the integration of Firebase Analytics. And uh, maybe at some point I will. Uh, at the moment, it's only compat compatible with uh, iOS and Android uh, 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 apps. Uh, so you cannot uh, use Firebase Analytics for uh, web apps, uh, and you cannot use it uh, for add-ons. Uh, but uh, uh, maybe in the future we will be, and uh, so maybe it will be time to uh, switch to Firebase Analytics at some point. I will see. Well, thanks for that, Remain. That's uh, a wonderful insight in in terms of how you've um, you know you're using Google Analytics. I think in particular, I liked how you you know you addressed that that you can use analytics on the client side or the server side. Um, so I think that's a, a huge tip for people. We've we got some time for questions from the audience. So if um, anyone wants to, uh, oh, we lost Romain. But he's Sorry. back. Well, I rambled. So that's that's perfect. Perfect timing. We've got uh, a couple of moments for questions. If anyone wants to grab the mic and um, pick Romain's brain, I will. For one quick question. So could you um, just kind of clarify? So when you were tracking, you know, what the user did, where you see, where you're able to see. You know where they where they opened it, where they used it the first time, where they hit their quota. Is are you doing all that on the server side in AppScript, so you can accurately check? Uh, so, uh, for example, to check if a user uh, is uh, using uh, the add-on for the first time, uh, actually, uh, I am creating uh, user profiles in Firebase. I'm using Firebase as my uh, database for user profiles. And uh, I wanted to, to check, uh, for example, if uh, people were uh, trying to uh, install the add-on, uh, use it, then uninstall, and try to use it again and see if they uh, get back their full quota or not, and so on. Uh, so now I'm uh, uh, retrieving uh, storing information from Firebase. And based on the data I have in Firebase, I'm also sending uh, data uh, to Google Analytics. Uh, so in Firebase, I have uh, my uh, user profile uh, who will uh, stay the same, uh, uh, who will always stay the same. Uh, I have the same uh, date of uh, uh, user account creation, uh, username, and so on. And in Analytics, I have uh, all the data that uh, evolves uh, every day, every month, and so on. Great. To, to, add on, to add on to that, um, so are you, all right, so the, are you sending the profile information that's in the, the Firebase for the profiles into Google Analytics? Uh, how are you rationalizing the two? Uh, so in, uh, in Firebase, uh, I'm uh, as it's my uh, own database for my own product. Uh, I can uh, store the uh, information I want, and I can store uh, the uh, email addresses uh, uh, and uh, first name and last name of uh, uh, each of my users, uh, which is uh, not authorized uh, in uh, Google Analytics. Uh, so I have a specific a uh, unique ID uh, for each user. And this is the uh, common link uh, between uh, Firebase and Google Analytics. Uh, I, I'm using an ID created in Firebase 
uh, that I'm sending uh, to Google Analytics and that I'm using as the uh, user ID uh, to accurately uh, track the number of active users every month. Got it. Thank you. It's a, a nice trick that a lot of people aren't aware of that you know when you export data from Google Analytics, you, you know you can use the user ID and then if you if you do have other data, you can match match the sources. Yeah. So yeah, that's um, uh, usually what uh, Google Analytics uh, advises uh, to to do. So uh, well, for storing your your access IDs and things like that to Firebase and Analytics, um, I, I'm assuming you're not using script properties because it has a very small quota. Or are you just putting that information into the code? Uh, so uh, actually, uh, uh, Google Analytics, uh, you you don't uh, send a, a password or a, a token or whatever to uh, send data to Analytics. Uh, if you get my uh, 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 my Analytics account key. Uh, you can easily uh, spam uh, my uh, Google Analytics account, and that's uh, actually uh, uh, a new thing people are uh, doing at the moment. Uh, not uh, to to me, but uh, 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 Google is uh, fight has to fight a lot of uh, uh, spammers who are uh, sending uh, data to uh, a lot of different uh, uh, analytics profile simply because as uh, Google Analytics uh, is usually uh, used in. Uh, uh, public websites uh, on client side, uh, there cannot be any uh, authentication mechanism. And uh, 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 once you get the uh, uh, the ID of a Google Analytics uh, account, uh, you can uh, start sending uh, sending information. Uh, for uh, Firebase, I do have uh, uh, a private key, uh, and uh, we uh, created. Uh, with uh, Spencer uh, library called uh, Firebase, Firebase app uh, to uh, better make uh, use of uh, uh, Firebase uh, from the server side uh, of, uh, of AppScript. Uh, and uh, at the moment, I think the uh, Firebase app uh, key is uh, stored directly in the uh, AppScript editor, uh, not in, so it's, uh, uh, is the value for, for a specific variable. Yeah, yeah we run into that. Uh, where we'd like to store them in script properties, but the very small quota per minute makes it really difficult for large-scale apps, yeah. for sure. Um, and we're actually, by the way, great job on that library. We're using that on AppMaker University to pull the, to, to query the user information that we're collecting. Perfect. There, there was at some point an issue. Well, when we first created this uh, uh, this library, uh, in some uh, in in the case of specific errors, uh, the error message that was sent back to the user uh, contained uh, the uh, the the key, uh, the secret key to access uh, the the database, and uh, it was sent to uh, uh, end users. Um, but we uh, fixed that. Uh, uh, as soon as we discover that, uh, but uh, uh, you have to pay attention not to uh, share this private key uh, too easily. Uh, the good thing is uh, now uh, that uh, Firebase has been uh, reworked uh, by Google and so on, uh, uh, private keys uh, are not uh, used so much, and uh, now you can uh, create a service account instead and so on, uh, which make things a bit more secure. Well, I think we've got time for one more quick question. So I'll let someone grab the mic if they want to. I've got one if no one else does. Go on, Reed. Yeah, OK. Um, uh, all of this, uh, OK, so I've rolled my own analytics for they're, they're sort of like process minded so so that I can look at the user experience in my add-on and understand how the code is doing itself. I, don't, I have a very small user set, so I don't have to worry about you know, a lot of people hitting it. So, so what I've heard here, a lot of great information and in that it's okay to have complementary sets of analytical things going on that could, because you can uh, mash them up for various reasons. 
Uh, one of the things that is outstanding in my mind is is how I would go about automating some testing of of an add-on or or any app for that matter. Um, and when you do that testing, you're going to be generating things that you know analytics. And my thinking currently is you should go ahead and keep if you have an add-on or an app, you know, all of the analytics you generate should eventually be put somewhere that are that is in the same place. There might not be a reason to separate the user analytics from like analytics generated by developers or somebody testing something. And that that's my current thinking. And I just I don't know the answer to the question on how how to go about testing or automated testing of an add-on. Well, it depends how complex your add-on and how complex you uh, want your uh, workflow to be. Uh, at uh, so, for example, uh, in my company, we are supporting uh, many add-ons, including uh, yet user mail merge and form publisher. We have a lot of uh, users for them, and we have uh, several developers uh, working on them as well. Uh, so it is uh, preferable to have a different uh, version of the script, uh, one version uh, in production uh, available, uh, well, the, the version uh, used by uh, all users, and uh, several uh, versions created by uh, develop uh, the developers, uh, who are, which are usually uh, linked uh, to uh, a specific uh, Google Analytics account, and also a specific uh, Firebase database, and so on and so on. So uh, you will usually create a whole uh, developer environment uh, that is uh, separated uh, from the production environment. And uh, to do that, actually, uh, we are using uh, less and less uh, the uh, app script uh, online code editor, and uh, are uh, mostly using uh, WebStorm and uh, Bitbucket as a repository, code repository, uh, and uh, we are uh, doing some uh, grunt work and so on to uh, replace all variable between uh, developer version and production version to be sure that uh, we are deploying what we want to deploy with the right IDs and so on. Uh, but yeah, in uh, app script, if you want, you can uh, start building a quite complex uh, workflow to uh, to work and uh, test uh, appropriately your uh, your add-on or your web app. Uh, I suppose it really depends uh, on the uh, yeah the the number of uh, users you have and uh, uh, how uh, what uh, what you what is your your, your best uh, uh, what is the best workflow for you? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, workflow is definitely the secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, um, I, I'm just going to, unfortunately, we've run out of time, so I'd, um, I'd like to thank Romain and J James for uh, popping by and uh, sharing some of their expertise with us. Um, it's been thank great. you for inviting us. <laughs> thank you. Um, so this is the last year of the year, but we will be back in 2017. Um, and so there looks like a lot to talk about as well with um, the various early access programs and the um, app script seems to be um, in a rich period of development right now. Um, following feedback from previous shows, we have started collating show notes. So we'll be uh, putting together uh, clips from this episode and also um, I'll be uh, harassing James and remain for anything that they can share to add to those notes. Um, we'll share it as well. The The site is um, a new Google site. So I wanted to dog food new Google sites. I had quite a lot of fun. Um, and we'll share the link out so you can get access to that. Other than that, um, wish you all well for the holidays and we'll see you in 2017.